Reporting from Arkham Asylum, this is Gotham Rogues. In this video, we count down the 5 greatest Spider-Man villains. What is this? A Marvel video on Gotham Rogues? No, you're not seeing things. Old Rogi is actually going to talk about some Marvel characters. As much as I love DC villains, I have to admit that it's their old webhead who probably has the second greatest rogues gallery in comics, after Bats. Spider-Man has faced some pretty darn awesome and fascinating bad guys over the decades, and his collection of foes has grown to a size that even rivals the Dark Knights. With all the rogues he's fought, you could easily start a forgotten Spider-Man villain series. I'm not going to, but you should. That's right, you. Anyway, so while the title of this video is The 5 Greatest Spidey Villains, it's actually a list of my 5 personal favorite Spidey Villains. But that doesn't make for a good video title. Just a warning, some very popular Spidey Rogues will be missing from this list. I'm not saying they're bad characters, they're just not my personal favorites. And as always, feel perfectly free to rank your own favorite Spidey Rogues in the comments. Anyway, let's get on with it, shall we? Number 5. Craven the Hunter Sergei Kravinov, aka Craven the Hunter, is an eccentric Russian big game hunter who utilizes very unique methods in his hunting. Instead of bagging his prey with rifles or other weapons, Craven prefers to use his bare hands. His ability to wrestle wild animals is made possible due to a consumption of mystic potions and herbs, which grants him enhanced strength, speed, and agility, as well as slows down his aging. He considers Spider-Man to be the ultimate prey and has dedicated his life to besting old webhead in combat. Most people seem to think that Craven is a pretty goofy Spidey villain and that his only good story is the masterpiece Craven's Last Hunt. I don't really agree with that. When I began reading Spider-Man comics, I started at the beginning, reading the 60s Stan Lee and Steve Ditko stuff, and worked my way up chronologically. I didn't read everything though, I picked what seemed interesting. But anyway, when I finally got to Craven, I found him to be a very unique and interesting foe. He stood out among other comic book supervillains. Here we had a weird, burly Russian hunter with a Magnum P.I. mustache who liked to punch lions in the face. He also lived by a code of honor, always fighting fair, never using any tricks, and when he was beaten by Spidey, he gracefully admitted defeat and acknowledged his enemy's superiority. Until next time. How can you not love a guy like that? For a while, Craven was even my favorite Spidey rogue, and Craven's Last Hunt probably is my number one Marvel comic. Number 4. Electro Max Dillon, a regular nobody who worked as a lineman repairing electrical power lines, suffered from low self-esteem and a severe case of inferiority complex. He denied himself any ambitions in life as he thought he wasn't good or smart enough for anything. However, as fate would have it, on one rainy day while Max was working, lightning struck the electrical line, a freak accident which should have fried dear Maxie, but since it's comics, he was naturally instead granted electrical powers. With these abilities, Max began to grow a little more more confident. In taking on the moniker of Electro, he set out to prove himself as a somebody. Electro is in some ways Spider-Man's Riddler. Yeah, they don't pose the same type of threat at all, but they have very similar motivations. They're both terrified of being ignored and considered nobodies. Their main goal is to prove themselves as somebody who matters. But while Eddie actually is talented and special, Max Dillon isn't really. He really is a nobody who just happened to gain incredible powers. You'd think that'd make him a poor character, but actually it makes him extremely interesting and also very relatable. Most of us who desire for a far greater life in life ain't geniuses like the Riddler. We're more like Max, ordinary folk. This is what I find so fascinating and compelling about Electro. I do have to admit though that his costume is a bit goofy, but at the same time it also has that old school comic booky charm. Number 3. Dr. Octopus Otto Octavius was once a brilliant and renowned nuclear physicist, but a lab accident caused his mind to be permanently linked with a peculiar invention of his, a set of four mechanical arms attached to a harness. The accident clearly affected his sanity too, as Otto soon became a dangerous supervillain going by the name Dr. Octopus, or as Spidey likes to call him, Doc Ock. As Octopus, Otto uses his four mechanical arms to wreak havoc, usually in some attempt at world domination, or to kill his hated arch-nemesis, Old Webhead, who constantly foils his evil plots. 
To me, Dark Ark is the quintessential Spidey foe. Sure, he isn't really Webhead's number one arch enemy, that spot goes to Green Goblin, but when I picture Spidey fighting some supervillain on the streets or roofs of Manhattan, it's Dark Ark. There ain't no Spider-Man imagery that's more iconic than the old wall crawler webbing around, dodging Ark's violently thrashing arms. Ark is also a perfect example of the archetypical mad scientist comic book supervillain, complete with that lovingly arrogant and megalomaniacal personality. He's a really fun character to read, and his hatred of Spider-Man, whom he views as inferior and always refers to as insect, is both fascinating and entertaining. But there's also a human side to Otto, as he's occasionally shown to care about some people, like Peter Parker's Aunt May, whom he almost married once. It's a long story. And Otto's past was eventually revealed to be very sad, filled with family tragedies and heartbreaks. Number 2. The Lizard Dr. Kurt Connors was another scientist, formerly a medic in the army, who lost his right arm in some nondescript war. Once back home, he became obsessed with reptiles' ability to regenerate lost limbs, and began to experiment with reptilian DNA, theorizing that humans could do so too. In the hopes of regrowing his arm, Dr. Connors injected himself with a serum created with reptilian DNA, and to his amazement, it actually worked. But of course, since this is comics, his experiment had horrific side effects as well. Connors was transformed into a giant man-sized lizard monster. Sinister and cold-blooded, this lizard wants nothing but to end mankind and let his reptilian brethren inherit the earth. The high ranking of old Lissy here shouldn't come as a surprise to you, as you know I love these types of characters. Well-meaning scientists who accidentally transform themselves into hideous monsters, like Manbat and Clayface 3. Besides having a lot in common with those two, Connors also has a lot in common with Two-Face. He's a man split between good and evil, a half-man, half-monster. What's also fascinating about Kurt is that in his human form, he's one of Spider-Man's friends and allies, frequently aiding the wall crawler, which adds further layers to the character. Then just of course his family, his poor wife Martha and son Billy, who's forced to endure this horrible nightmare with him. The lizard is without a doubt Spidey's most tragic and sympathetic foe, plus his visual design is awesome. A green scaled lizard man wearing a white lab coat, how cool isn't that? And now for the greatest Spider-Man villain of them all, in my opinion. Number 1. Mysterio there's been a few rogues who's gone by the moniker Mysterio, but the most notable and famous one is Quentin Beck. Beck was a stuntman and special effects wizard in Hollywood who eventually decided to use his tricks and illusions to start a life of supervillainy as the enigmatic Mysterio. So yeah, Mysterio is my top Spider-Man villain. Obviously he's not Spidey's biggest or most popular foe, but he's been my personal favorite since I was a kid. It was the awesome visual design that did it for me back then, and I still love it. The dome obscuring his face, the green getup, the billowing purple cape. He's definitely got one of the most eye-catching designs ever. However, for a while I kinda drifted away from Mysterio and almost forgot about him. For some weird reason I skipped his stories while doing my first run reading Spidey comics, and like I said, crazy Raven was briefly my favorite Spidey rogue, but then I eventually went back and read the Mysterio stuff and was basically reminded that he was my favorite. I also liked him even more than before, as I discovered the many things that makes him so great. Like for example, his ability to mess with Spidey's mind using various tricks and illusions. He's the only rogue who's capable of making old Webhead doubt his own sanity and making question what is reality. Mysterio is also unique among Spidey rogues in that he's one of few who lacks any actual powers. Instead, he uses gadgets. There's also also been more sympathetic portrayals of Beck in the comics, depicting him as a misunderstood and well-intentioned individual who just harbors a great love for special effects. By the way, if you want to know which the top 5 best Mysterio stories are, I suggest you check out Super Sam's video, The Top 5 Mysterio Stories, a link to it is in the description. So there you have it, those are my top favorite Spidey Rogues. It was not easy to make this list, considering there's so many great members of the Spidey Rogues gallery. A lot of good ones had to be excluded, and there's two big obvious omissions, arguably the two most popular Spider-Man foes. I'm of course talking about Venom and the Green Goblin. I'm sure many of you were shocked and outraged at their exclusion, but what can I say? They've never really been among my personal favorites, despite their impressive feats. I would say though that Venom definitely has the coolest visual design after Lizard and Mysterio. Anyway, don't forget to write your own favorite Spidey Rogues in the comments. And as always, remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.